We're at the Schoharie Preserve in Schoharie, New York. My name is Mike Gerard, and I've been caving for about 25 years. The goal of today is to send the ROV into the end of Schoharie Cavern, where there is a sump. And that sump was first explored in the 60s by Russell Gurney. That's going way back. That must have been like when he was a young, young cave. Yeah, I would never have recognized him in that picture. That's too young. And this is a wonderful cave also showing the work of uh, uh, Gurney and Gage. I mean, 1938 is when they first were trying to make this cave open to the public, and that kind of flopped. But it ha finally happened, I think it was 1958, and that thanks to uh, Jim Gage and Russell Gurney. And it's wonderful. You can see a picture of Miss America, 1958, from, I believe, Denver, uh, walking down a walkway they put in front of the cave, along with Miss New York. So it was a big you know, event, and it's a great NSS property. I'm so glad that they took possession of it, and it's got a wonderful history, so much more uh, than most people are aware of. Well, the journey, it, most of it's very easy because there is a lot of just walking path. You just sort of watch your step because there are uh, stones from collapses long ago that are uh, on the floor, and it is flooded. Sometimes it's only your ankles deep. Sometimes it can get almost waist deep, uh, but it's never really that bad. But there are some challenges where you have to climb over some collapses or kind of duck and crawl under, but none of them are that tough that I think that any caver could easily handle. But with the ROV itself, it made it a little more challenging because now you have this added 50, 60 pounds that you have to navigate through these difficult uh, climbs and crawls, but it doesn't slow you down too much. So I'd say overall, compared to some dives we've done with the uh, ROV, this was pretty easy to get in and out, but it's a long walk, a lot longer than you think. You know, and this cave actually is known uh, by some as having the best features, formations, but I could say with my own experience, yes, absolutely, there are beautiful formations in there that are amazing to see, but some formations that really just pop out at you, but then you have that um, room where it goes incredibly high, and you see the water raining down, and we saw uh, an area where it looks like it was crystallizing. So as we came around the corner, you saw sparkling on the rock. Even though I've been here before, there's still new things I'm discovering on every visit here. So there's so many hidden in places. So you got to go back again and again to really get the full impact of this cave. Uh, Russell Gurney was the first person to try to do a dive in that sump. And uh, unfortunately didn't go well, but people have continued behind him pushing it further and further. So there's amazing things to be seen in this wonderful cave that only a few people have seen. Now by sending the ROV in, what we can do is we can capture that and offer that now to the people who've been here before that are wondering what is beyond that spot and also be able to look at it more closely, maybe uh, and at ease, unlike divers could, because it's a dangerous thing to do. Wow, that looks good. Yeah. This is like, one of the cleanest runs yet. So look for anything left behind by the divers, in fact, there's like any strings or guidelines or whatever. Yeah. Oh, look at this, it's like a tunnel, like a channel. Oh yeah, it's going up. I, I think we're only like halfway through the tether. Oh my god, you got airspace. Just a little tiny pocket yeah, there. there. Imagine some pockets in there. We're out. Oh my god! Oh, that's weird. It's a like mirror imaging. Mirror yeah, imaging. That's confusing. Yeah. It changes there it orange. Is. Wow, you're in airspace. It might be. Yeah, because there would be, you get a dead end. It, it would make the, the distance would make sense because you're probably at about 150 or so feet. You're definitely more than halfway through the tether. Are you upside down? Yeah. Did you hit something or did it just do that? Can you restart the, like, is there anything you can restart on it? Like, even maybe to use the controller or something? Like, you know, sometimes you reboot it and... Because it, it almost seems like it was glitching out with the 
way it was flipping around like that, yeah. that was that was not normal. So I wonder if you made it on. Every night before I do these ROVs, all the things that could go wrong race through my mind. Getting stuck, uh, kicking up the silt so we don't get any visuals, um, not sure which way to go, being limited in, within a short period of time how far the ROV can go because the water got too shallow. But none of that happened. I mean, we had a little difficulty, but no more than any other run. And we got some amazing footage that really was far better than I expected. And I think we've just begun pushing how far we can go. We did it up to about getting close to 60, 65% of battery. And just like with cave divers, you want to turn around before you uh, get to the halfway point. So about two thirds of your juice come back in case you have problems. So we can return and then just pick up where we left off and push a little further. So I think there's a lot more we can see. And um, I'm looking forward to that. And also coming back to, again, see more of the amazing features that maybe I missed on the last visit.